Hey, good morning, church. It's good to have you back with us today. We're going to dive into some scripture this morning as we um, just uh, dive back into the book of Philippians. Hopefully you've had a good week and things are well with you. Uh, this morning uh, we're in the book of Philippians chapter 3 and I uh, want to remind you of a couple things to pray for. Um, one is uh, we have our uh, student ministry, uh, middle school and high school, that are going to be taking off this afternoon. They are traveling to uh, Kentucky to work with um, uh, the staff at White Mills Christian Camp um, to do a bunch of work projects for them and to prepare the camp for their summer programs and things of that nature. And so uh, our kids are going to be taking off this afternoon, traveling up uh, to Georgia, spending the night, and then traveling the rest of the way tomorrow, and then working for several days, and then they're going to be returning back to uh, Eustis on next Wednesday. So I'll be in prayer for the kids, be in prayer for our sponsors and the work that's going to be happening there that is encouraging uh, to the people there and it's beneficial for kingdom work um, this summer. Also want to remind you to pray uh, about our new message series. We've got a new sermon series that starts this Sunday, um, Sunday morning. We start a brand new series uh, looking at the Passion Week of Jesus, all the things that went into the last week of Jesus on earth and what he encountered and what he did, what did he teach, um, <coughs> his interactions with people. And we'll talk about that over the next couple of weeks leading up to Easter. And Easter is like four weeks away. It's crazy. Uh, it's coming up so quickly, but we're looking forward to that. There's a lot of activities going on around Easter. So love to have you be um, able to join us and participate in that and um, be in prayer about that as well as we um, as we think about what the Lord is going to do in those things. Uh, but today I want to get back into the scripture um, and do uh, just read the rest of this chapter in chapter 3. Uh, and then we'll start fresh with chapter 4 um, on Monday. So again, Paul is writing to the, to the believers, the Christians in Philippi. Uh, and he's been writing about this idea of uh, don't put confidence in ourselves, but rather put confidence in God. Um, the, the idea that it is God who saves us, that God who rescues us and transforms us and all those different things. Um, and so today he's going to continue this idea and give us a really good reminder. So we're going to look at a couple different things today that really stand out in the scripture. But I'm just going to read the text first and then we'll talk about it. Verse 15, he says, All of us then who are mature should take such view of things. And if on some point you think differently... That, too, God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together. I love that, I love that idea. Joining together, this unity, this oneness. Uh, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears... Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. So a lot of things he says right here, one thing I think is so important and something that we we talk about quite a bit, but I think it's it's something we just need to focus on and really pay attention to, especially in our culture today, where he says, join together, um, brothers and sisters, and following my example. And he says, and not just our example, but you keep your eyes focused on those who do as we do, those people who are living godly lives. He says, those are the people you want to focus on. Those are the people you want to surround yourself with. Those are the people you want to link arms with and do life together because they're the ones that are going to help propel you toward the ultimate mission, and that is to bring honor and glory to God. That is our mission in life. And if our mission in life is to bring honor and glory to God, to please God, we need to surround ourselves with as many people, as much support system as we can that are going to help me uh, keep going. The scripture speaks over and over about the company we keep, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 16 says um, that poor company or bad company will corrupt even good character. So if we have good character in our life, but if all we do is surround ourselves with 
ungodliness, eventually that's going to rub off on us. That eventually you're going to become like the company you keep. And so we've got to really be careful. So I would just encourage you to ask yourself, who are the four or five people that you are watching and learning from? Who are you uh, sitting under in terms of tutelage? And who are you being mentored by? Who Who is maybe a, a spiritual um, champion that you are sitting underneath that you might learn from? Uh, who are you who are you spending a considerable amount of time with? Um, it's not to say that we can't influence our culture. It's not to say that we can't go where there's brokenness and go where there's sinful uh, patterns of be behavior. I'm not saying we can't do that because we need to be influential. We need to be salt and light. But the question is, where are we being influenced the most? Who are you surrounding yourself with? And will those people that you're surrounding yourself with, do they have the same goals that you have? Do they have the same mentality they have, that you have? Do you have the same core beliefs that those people have? And are you spurring one another on? Are you encouraging one another on toward love and good deeds? Um, so important for us to understand. He, uh, he goes on and he talks about the idea that there are some that live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Um, an enemy of the cross. Now, most time, when I think of an enemy... Um, when I think of an enemy, I think of someone who is, I don't know, trying to harm me, trying to take something from me, someone who is opposing me. Uh, most of the time I think like in, in terms of a physical thing, I, I normally think of an enemy as someone who wants to like maybe duke it out with me. Um, and, and that definitely applies here, but I think there's, there's so much more here that Paul is talking about. He says, let's, let's be careful of those people who are enemies of the cross of Christ. So the cross of Christ means the idea that the cross of Christ is all about our salvation and all about our forgiveness of sins. It's all about God's plan to redeem mankind. His goal in the cross was that men and women find salvation and forgiveness in Jesus. And so we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be an enemy of the cross of Christ? Well, the enemy of the cross of Christ would be anything or anyone that is seeking to stop the mission of God, the purpose of God. And so if God's purpose is to redeem mankind, to see men and women saved from Jesus, um, if, that is, if that is his intention, uh, Jesus' intention, anything that comes against that is an enemy of the cross, it is, an, it is, an, is an opposition to that. So that's any one person or anything that is an opposition is an enemy of the cross of Christ, so dangerous uh, to associate ourselves with things that are enemies of the cross of Christ. Um, so I just want to encourage you to think that way, be uh, biblically minded as you uh, as you think about that dynamic of um, of what is our main mission. And so anything that is our main mission, our main mission is to go and make disciples. That's what Jesus said. And so anything that thwarts that plan, anything that is in opposition to that plan is an enemy of the cross of Christ, and we should not, um, we should not cater to that. And then he says, this is one of my favorite scriptures uh, in verse 20, he says, but our citizenship is in heaven. Um, that's such a cool thing. Our citizenship is in heaven. Um, a couple things that means. One, there's a promise, right? There's a future for us. There is hope for us. There is peace that we get to live with now because we know what is to come. We know that God has prepared a place for us. Um, that it's going to be glorious, uh, it's going to be perfect. Um, but there's another dynamic there that, that, uh, that I think is so important we recognize, and that is that if our citizenship is in heaven, that means that this is not, this is not home for us. This is not our eternal resting place. Um, therefore, if this is only a temporary dwelling here, why would we ever want to put too much stock in this world? right? Um, I, I like to think about it like tent camping. Um, now, when you go tent camping, you want to have some amenities, right? You you want to have some things that are nice and comfortable. And now we've got all these different things. We've got air mattresses, and we've got portable AC th systems, and we've got uh, fans, and we've got electric at these uh, at these uh, state parks that we have. Uh, we go camping at. And all this stuff. There's all these amenities to tent camping. But let's just be honest. When you go tent camping, one of the great joys of tent camping most of the time is when you can recognize and understand this is only temporary right that my tent camping yeah it's cool when you go and embark on it and you want to have fun it's out in the wilderness 
but there's also something really joyful that sets in about day two or three when you realize, oh, you know what? In a couple of days, I get to go back to my bed. I get to go back to AC. I get to go back. We're spoiled by that kind of stuff. But tents were never meant to be permanent, right? Our bodies were not meant to be permanent. This world that we live in, it is not a permanent dwelling place. Therefore, let's not put too many roots down in this world, right? Or where Jesus says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where they're going to get destroyed. But rather store up treasures in heaven. Put your efforts there. Put your emphasis there. Fix your eyes on things above, not the things of this earth. The other dynamic there is if, if, our, if our citizenship is in heaven, that means that on earth, we're really foreigners. We're aliens in this world. Um, Peter talks about this in Second Peter chapter 3 where he says that we are aliens and foreigners in this world. And then he asks the question, he says, how then should we live? And he says we should live holy and godly lives as we long for the day that we will be redeemed in glory. Um, so let me just encourage you. Don't put too much stock in this world. Don't, don't put your roots down too deep in this world because this world is temporary. Our bodies are temporary. And, and it says there, Paul, Paul says that God is at some point going to transform our lowly bodies into uh, bodies that are like his sons. So we look forward to that someday, and it gives us great hope right now. But right now, let's make sure that we are mindful of the company we keep, and let's get our eyes focused on heaven, which is where our citizenship rests. Uh, let's pray. God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for uh, the joy of reading the scripture and applying it to our life and the comfort it gives us. Help us, God, to be faithful. Help us to be surrendered. Help us to be loyal to you. Help us, God, to put into practice what we say we believe. Um, I pray, God, you would give us a good perspective on living in our life and how we respond to you and adversity and people, that it might honor you in the way we go. God, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, hope you have a good, good day today. Look forward to seeing you this weekend on Sunday. Uh, if you can't join us in person, obviously you can join us online at 8 or 9.30, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. Have a good day.